Hello! If you didn't see the last video, I've done this once before. This video is a tier list where I'm going to be ranking every game that I earned a platinum trophy in while playing games on either my PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, or PlayStation 5, because I don't own a Vita and Nintendo hasn't gotten back to me about implementing trophies on the Switch yet. A platinum trophy is earned when a player unlocks all other trophies, Sony system for tracking achievements in their games, and this year, I managed to earn myself a total of <laughs> trophies. As a quick refresher from last year, here's how these games are going to be ranked. A bronze tier game is a game that either has bad gameplay or no real challenge towards earning the trophy. A silver tier is an alright game with an alright list of trophies to earn. Gold tier is a fantastic game, but maybe had one or two trophies that were harder to obtain or something about the gameplay made it a little less fun. And a platinum tier is a fantastic game that doesn't require much effort to earn that platinum, or at the very least doesn't feel like busy work and is just great fun to play through and through. I'll be going over each game I played in ascending order, starting with bronze tier and working my way up to platinum. I'll tell you a bit about the game, what it was like to earn the platinum trophy in that game, and then the video will be over because that's how time works. All opinions are my own, and this list is more ranked in terms of how easy or hard it may be to earn the platinum trophy, not the actual quality of the games in question, because I like some of these games a lot more than I did earning the trophies for them and vice versa. And if you watched my video talking about my favorite games of 2021, first off, Thank you for watching my content. But also, you can expect to see some of those games in this list as well. Sound good? All right, I've got a lot of games to talk about this time around, so let's start things off with the bronze tier. An incredibly simple game from the same developer who made Road Bustle from my list last year, Chickens on the Road is somehow easier than that Frogger wannabe. It literally took me five minutes to complete this game since all you need to do is drive, pick up chickens, avoid cars coming at you, and that's all there is to it. It's about as simple as they come, and thus has the honor of being our first entry in this list's bronze tier. As far as stupid simple games go, Funny Truck is one of the most stupid simple out there. The whole point of the game is to drive around a haphazard area full of shapes and toss out a never-ending fountain of bodies from the back of your truck, as you tend to do. While you can drive around and make sharp turns to toss bodies out, you can also just tilt a stick to one side for about 15 minutes and walk away with a platinum. Absolutely one of the easiest games I earned the platinum for this year, and thus it languishes in the bronze tier. A fun little Mega Man inspired side scroller that's completable in about 20 minutes if you're going just for the plat, but still offers more game beyond just that. It's not particularly challenging, both in its gameplay and trophy unlocks, but compared to most other Raid Alaka games, Gun Crazy is at least fun enough for me to want to play beyond earning the platinum. In general, I just wish the game's trophy list wanted me to play more of it, but with how quickly and easily I unlock the plat, I can only give this one a bronze tier ranking. This next game is proof that I have no shame. I wanted to have a stereotypical sexy game for my 69th Platinum, and ended up picking up this one because it didn't look terrible when compared to some of the other obligatory sexy games on the PlayStation Store. What I got was half an hour of a basic third-person shooter, where the most interesting thing in it is the design of the Reaper enemies, and the fact that it lets you dress up with the three similar-looking characters, and the first option you see is thighs. Not a terrible game, all things considered, but the next time I want to play with some sexy thighs, I'll just check out the KFC game where you can romance the Colonel, and like the Colonel's smooth, tanned skin, hentai versus evil is just bronze. Inksplosion is a game that I've debated buying for a while now, thanks in part to its colorful aesthetic, decent level of challenge behind it, and simple gameplay, but earning the platinum in this one was far too quick, so I'm glad this one was cheap. I was expecting something more akin to Geometry Wars, where I can endlessly play it over and over, but this one is more of a wham bam thank you ma'am situation. Simply play two of the game's modes for a little while, play one mode until you get a single kill, and that's it. I wish that the trophies offered more reason to continue playing beyond just giving a certain point total in two game modes, but sadly this is not the case, and thus this game is probably the highest rated of the bronze tier entries on this list. Not much of a win if you ask me. Mochi Mochi Boy is a pseudo slide puzzle game with a cute aesthetic that has a lot of levels you can play, but you really only need to play a fraction of it to get the platinum. A couple rounds in the dungeon and then climb the tower mode for a bit and you're done. Even if the game has some puzzles that don't offer an immediately obvious solution, it's still an engaging little puzzle game that's fun to play even after the platinum's been unlocked. 
It just really doesn't do enough with this concept for the platinum to unlock, so it was over and done way too quick for me, and it gets a rank of bronze. Basically, chickens on the road, but with no stakes and you're running through Chinatown avoiding an uncomfortable amount of sumo wrestlers. The coins don't really give you points, you don't have to worry about lives because getting hit has no consequence, and all you need to do is get the required number of coins for the platinum, making this the easiest and dullest platinum trophy this year, and a good way to cap off the bronze tier entries on this list. The Batman Arkham games are some of my personal favorite superhero games, but unlike the recent Spider-Man games for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, these are games that I have never tried to platinum until now. One of the main reasons I never tried to complete the games before were the challenge maps, a series of either stealth or combat scenarios that require specific tasks be completed or a point threshold be met. The stealth challenges aren't all that bad. One or two of them did cause a little bit of trouble for me, but the combat challenges almost always require performance perfection from the player, and considering some of the minor bugs present in the Return to Arkham version I played for this Platinum, combined with the already hard to achieve goalposts, I spent more time on the combat challenges than playing through the main story of the game twice. I love this series, with Arkham City still being one of my personal favorite games even though the Platinum Trophy is admittedly as much of a bastard if not more than this one was, but this was just a painful experience to get through and lands safely in the silver tier on this list. This is a game where you pretend to be a cat knocking stuff off of tables, shelves, and everything else for about 10 to 15 hours. There's really not much else to it beyond the catching the occasional mouse, making almost the entire trophy list a slog to get through. That said, it's a lot better of a game than the average bronze ranked game, since I actually had to play it longer, and the game does hold a special place in my heart as the first game I ever played on the PlayStation VR, so I'm at least willing to give this otherwise alright game a silver tier ranking. I thought this game was going to be a lot worse than it ended up being simply because it was a Rattalaika game, but I was pleasantly surprised by Concept Destruction. The trophies aren't difficult to earn, mind you, but they do require a wider range of requirements outside of the Rattalaika typical push block two feet to unlock plat. The cardboard cars respond surprisingly well and their handling changes with your destruction, but the overall novelty of the gameplay wore off fast when trying to get the plat. Fun for a bit in the beginning, but gets boring quick, and the trophies aren't merely as easy as your typical Ray to Lake affair, so I'll at least give this one a silver tier. It's at least more playable than some of the other Ray to Lake games, that is. A simple, do the opposite of what the thing says puzzle game, this one is bumped up beyond bronze tier because it actually has one or two puzzles that were creative or genuinely had me stumped for a bit. Otherwise, it's as simple as clear the room by doing the opposite of what the sign says, or find the hidden path, or whatever, and then move on. Not much else to it, but it was enough to keep me more engaged than some of the Raid Alaka games in the bronze tier, and I'll at least bump it up to the silver tier. I promise, that is the last Raid Alaka game for this year, so let's just move on. Multiple playthroughs, or at least save states required, a lot of tedious legwork, and an incredibly difficult settlement happiness requirement make for a long trophy unlock process. It doesn't help that this is a Bethesda game, with weird glitches, crashes, and bugs to help make the process last just that much longer. The game can be fun to just lose yourself to, exploring the wasteland, finding the occasional random encounter, or building ridiculous bases for fun, but the trophies try to railroad the experience in the dumbest ways, forcing you to collect things that are scattered all around the mostly hostile world, and don't offer much role-playing depth in this role-playing title thanks to a combat-first mentality. But hey! At least it's more playable than Fallout 76, so this game gets a silver tier rank for that fact alone. Requiring a minimum of three playthroughs, or 2.8 if you want to cheese it, and purposefully tough requirements for at least two of those playthroughs make for a more annoying than difficult platinum unlock. Thankfully, most of the more challenging objectives like beating Sephiroth or collecting everything only have to be done in a single save file, so it's more about enduring the difficulty settings and the two alternate play modes. I'm glad that I can still call this one of my favorite games, but I doubt I'll try to go for the platinum again unless I'm bored. Kingdom Hearts gets the silver tier ranking on this list, and knowing Nomura, that little nugget of info will somehow become integral to the overall plot of the series going forward. 
What starts out as a mostly fun and innocent kart racer quickly devolves into a grind-heavy perfectionism tour for slime tokens and dealing with AI opponents that rubber band so quickly at the highest speed that it comes down to pure luck whether or not you finish a race in first place regardless of how far they are when you're about to cross the finish line. And when the game forces you to play on all speeds, the last speed being insane where the aforementioned unfair rubber banding occurs, as well as the general problems I have with the gameplay itself, you have a game that's fun at first, but not worth going for the Platinum. And I honestly would have put it in gold, if not for the otherwise hidden insane speed and my own personal hatred for whoever programmed Jojo Siwa into the game. I played this after Kart Racer 2 Grand Prix, and I was genuinely surprised by the stark contrast between the two games. The first game features much more stiff controls than the second, less upgrades and playable characters, lower graphical fidelity, and more stuff you might expect from a first entry in a series. But it also has several game modes and features that the sequel just straight up abandoned. Things like switching between kart and jet ski, unique character attacks, and tracks that change throughout the race. Overall, the requirements to earn the Platinum are slightly easier since you don't need to 3-star a bullshit speed race with terribly unbalanced rubber banding, but it's still a slog to get through with the aforementioned problems, and one that I more or less did for the sake of completion rather than enjoyment. So it sits right alongside its admittedly more fun to play sequel in the silver tier. Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborhood is a fun game, with a wide variety of characters to play on either side of the conflict, plenty of variety to gameplay both in online multiplayer and through the mostly offline four separate campaigns, but this one is just shy of a gold tier, let alone platinum, for one simple reason. This goddamn trophy. This one trophy alone made me spend two years playing this game on and off, with nearly two-thirds of my 200 plus hours of playtime dedicated solely towards leveling up characters to earn it, finding quick ways to do it out of obligation rather than enjoyment. If there wasn't a needless limit on the level up station, this would have gone much quicker. But then I guess it wouldn't be an EA game without some arbitrary blocker to keep you playing that has the potential to be solved with money, now wouldn't it? Battle for Neighborville is the weakest of the Garden Warfare trilogy in terms of platinum completion, and thus is saddled with the silver tier. Please Don't Touch Anything is the perfect disobey order simulator, because once you press that big red juicy button the first time, it leads you down a massive rabbit hole of disobedience and destruction. This single button on the panel leads to a cavalcade of escape room-esque scenarios that you need to figure out, each one more cryptic than the last, with some basically being random in how you solve them. I'm fine with escape room type games but this one can be infuriating to figure out in terms of platinum completion thanks to needing random phone numbers and a few difficult and long chains of commands to enter that can eat up time, so this one gets the silver tier rank despite it being a fun and engaging puzzle game. Much like Ratchet Deadlock from last year's video, I absolutely love Psychonauts, the main difference being that this is easily my favorite game ever made, but going for 100% completion is a chore that barely gives you anything as a reward. Figment hunting is hard because they're hard to see and can move around the environment, which is something I'm glad the sequel fixed. Time-specific trophies both in and out of the game are always annoying, and having to play every round of punchy targets to get a hidden side rank 101 is downright evil, and kept me from getting this one for the longest time. Hence the trophy tips video I made to hopefully help you get that elusive bastard. In general, I find it hard to justify getting 100% completion for a single extra cutscene that can now just be looked up on YouTube, and while I greatly enjoy playing the game, going for the Platinum was a daunting task. So my favorite game of all time is sadly nestled in the silver tier rank. A short hike is just that. A short hike through a small mountainous island filled with one-note characters, an interesting blend of pixel art and 3D models, and a simple but fun quest to climb to the top and help everyone along the way. The titular hike only takes about half an hour to an hour to complete, but once that's over, you can experience the many denizens of the island and partake in the variety of minigames and collection challenges. All in all, it's an experience that feels open and inviting, and one that is just a nice little diversion with some minor annoying collection missions, if nothing else, making this the first gold tier entry on our list. Islanders is a calming experience dedicated to building a community on randomly generated islands, focusing less on the needs of the people and focusing more on what buildings look nice next to one another. 
It's an incredibly simple puzzle experience that can offer hours of play, and the trophies for the most part fit into that idea. Earn points by placing buildings, play often, and make good combinations and choices. The only one that is a bit more drastic than the others in my mind are the speedrun trophies, but if you know how the game works and focus on speed over aesthetic, you'll walk away with this trophy and the platinum in no time. Islanders is a game that is just relaxing to play, and this one is a gold tier entry on this list. While I have enough problems with the actual gameplay on this one to have made an entire video about it, the trophies are for the most part easy to unlock with time and dedication. Playing each song on world tour on each difficulty unlocks most of the trophies and all of the songs, and then all that's left is some cleanup related to getting chests, beating enemies, and playing enough songs to perfection if you haven't gotten that already. I just wish the game was spread out a bit better, because nearly a third of my time playing was spent doing trophy mop up in the end, and that basically just involved me playing the same enemy me heavy songs over and over again. It's a good thing I like the music in the game, but this just does make it shy of platinum rank and drops it down to the gold tier. A fantastically stylized multiplayer dodgeball game, this is one of the few multiplayer titles I actively tried to get the platinum for. Partly because I thought I was actually kind of good at the game, partly because the game's trophies are relatively easy to unlock, partly because it's one of the few multiplayer games I got in and the ground running, and partly because it gives me an excuse to keep playing this great game. I have my problems with it, and the trophies really incentivize grind, but overall it's still fun to play, and all the trophies only help to enforce that. The cosmetic related ones are some of the most annoying due to random drops, but otherwise it's just about playing with the occasional side diversion based on the level you're playing on. Overall an enjoyable experience, and it gave me an excuse to play a game with some friends for once since I usually prefer to play games like this solo, because I'm lonely. So thank you Zach for joining me and helping me earn this one, and Knockout City walks away with a gold tier ranking on this list. Considering my experience with the Nickelodeon kart racing games, I almost expected a similar level of either monotony or insane difficulty. Lucky for me, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl was a genuinely fun game to platinum, but thanks to some online problems like poor connections and opponents who remain in the character select forever to make the experience a slog near the end, just kind of bore this one down for me. Overall, I'm very happy with my time with this game, especially when compared to its kart racing cousins, and the trophies that more or less just ask you to play as everyone in a variety of modes, so I'm more than alright giving Nick All-Star Brawl a gold tier ranking. And expect a mains list of this game sometime soon, possibly for the game's one year anniversary or after the next DLC character comes out. We'll see. The original Garden Warfare feels very limited compared to the overabundance of content in the game's two sequels, but the more limited scope help makes this a more streamlined experience. Less characters to perfect, less challenging objectives to complete. Honestly, this would be a platinum rank if not for the Garden Crazy Trophy, which practically requires you to complete the hardest difficulty of Garden Ops with at least two other people, and considering how few people are still willing to play this one, I had to sit through quite a few matches and empty lobbies before I got a team that eventually helped bring me the victory. It's not nearly as bad as the trophy from Battle for Neighborhood that kept me playing the game for two years, but bad enough to drop it down at least to a gold tier ranking. I loved Saints Row 4, and this expansion not only lets me play as one of my favorite characters from the series, but it adds a fun, hellish twist onto a game I already enjoyed and gives enough unique content to justify a separate release, even if a lot of it is admittedly just padding. The only major problem I had getting the Platinum is the co-op trophy, because as I said before, I'm a lonely, lonely boy, and this one requires you to play co-op with someone for three hours, but with no online matchmaking, it's either get a friend or some rando online to help you, or do what I did, and use two consoles to have your characters just sit there for three hours, staring at nothing and doing nothing. It's enough of annoyance that I put it off for months, and coupling that with the minor annoyances of all the collectibles and having to sit around for a few hours to run out the clock, I think it's enough of a perfect storm of minor problems to bump this one down to a gold tier ranking. A beautiful game with fantastic music, the main downside of Sayonara Wild Hearts is actually the trophy hunting. Rather than have the trophies related to completing levels or getting collectibles, almost every trophy has you complete specific objectives within specific levels or in relation to the game mechanics themselves. What's worse, the solutions to these are provided through cryptic riddles, and while some of them are pretty easy to figure out or to just brute force your way through, with even a few being able to be earned by sheer dumb luck, there are some that are not only difficult 
difficult to figure out without a guide, but also difficult to just earn in the first place. Many of the trophies have you play levels in specific ways that contradict what the level has you doing. And when the game requires pinpoint accuracy from you in certain segments and one minor slip up can end an entire run right near the end, it just makes for an infuriating experience and an otherwise excellent game. This is a game that I love for everything it offers except the trophies. So this one falls just short of platinum due to the riddles required to get almost every trophy in the game, but it still sits high among the gold tier entries on this list. An adorable little gravity game starring a group of spacefaring otters and one of my personal favorite games of 2021, the spacefaring otters bit alone was enough for me to get on board this game. The gameplay is fairly simple, despite some minorly frustrating game design choices, but it's still a fun and easy side-scroller that happens to also feature a trophy dedicated to collecting otter facts. The one or two annoyances I had with this one were hard to overlook, however. Specifically, a boss fight with a large fireball that's difficult simply because you are in a time crunch the only time this happens in the game. In general, I greatly enjoyed this one, and I have no qualms awarding it a gold tier ranking. A fine enough racing game that I never got to experience when I was younger, Star Wars Racer Episode 1 takes one of the only good things from The Phantom Menace and makes an adequate to genuinely entertaining racing game out of it. The trophies themselves are fairly straightforward. Complete races, max out stats, etc. But one of them is a particular pain to deal with, since you either have to win every race on your first try to get enough money to buy all the upgrades, or you have to buy and sell back and forth in a sort of swap meet with Watto to get the credits that you need. Either way, this game was a blast. I love that they gave Tim Schafer a credit for not having any part in the game's development, which is just something that seems appropriate for him. And this game races across the finish line with a gold tier ranking. This absolutely would have been a platinum rank for the sheer fact that I love this game and all the trophies are great, if not for one trophy. Fector's Challenge. Not just because it's a needlessly hard task that can be cheated now, something I figured out much too late and you can learn about in my trophy tips video about said trophy, but because it and the other Journey of the Prairie King trophy are for playing a Smash TV style arcade game within a Harvest Moon knockoff and they don't even reward you with anything in game for completing it outside of your own arcade machine so you can play it again. It's a needless diversion that can take way too much time if you don't take the proper precautions and an annoying obstacle for the Platinum in an otherwise fantastic game. And the only thing I have to show for it is the Platinum trophy, which did become my most rare trophy I've earned to date, so gift horses and not looking them in places and whatnot. But sadly, it is stuck in gold tier because Fector is a fucker. A largely spiritual journey of restoring a broken land. The Pathless is a beautiful title with a fun gameplay loop, but somewhat tedious puzzles. The main gameplay loop of running, gliding, and shooting talismans all around the island to collect lightstones is satisfying through to the end. But after the first primary area, the game doesn't evolve this loop much beyond adding a little more challenge to the puzzles or making the area a little more difficult to traverse. The occasional interruption by the corrupted tall ones can also be an annoyance, especially in the final area where the storm cloud it inhabits teleported in front of me no less than three times dragging out the experience. All that said, the Pathless is an experience that I am more than happy to have played through and completed, but these minor annoyances kept it out of the Platinum tier for me, and so it is instead as gold as the many light stones I had to collect. Self-aware title aside, yet another Zombie Defense HD offers a surprising amount of variety to its challenge that are easily doable, but some specific ones are either too hard to achieve without some serious trial and error, or just take too much effort compared to others. Regardless of the game mode you're playing, it's a surprisingly fun twin-stick shooter, with some trophies requiring you to kill a large group of enemies with specific weapons or survive a predetermined amount of time, all of which are very doable, but a little difficult in some cases. In general, it's a great game, but because of these specifically difficult trophies, yet another Zombie Defense HD falls down into the gold tier. One of my absolute favorite games from the Switch, a contender for Game of the Year 2020, and an all-around just fantastic game that has become one of my personal favorites, Hades on PlayStation 5 is more of what I love about the original version, but now with trophies to unlock. I can't be certain, but I think there's also a few improvements like auto-aim for the bow and gun which make them infinitely better to use, and the trophies themselves basically have you complete the game and just gave me even more reason to re-complete one of my favorite games. 
In general, I just love the game, and going for the Platinum just means I have to play more of it. Even if a few of the trophies might feel a bit grindy, I still enjoy playing through said grind because the game is just that well made. And I managed to grind my way to earning this Platinum Tier Platinum. An incredibly simple experience with only really two controls, that being a left and right input, the game only asks that you clear the story campaign and reach a certain height of a survival tower. Everything else is basically earned just through gameplay, and once that's done, there's still a little bit of additional content players can access, allowing you to have even more fun. Even better is the fact that you're somewhat in control of the speed at which enemies come towards you. So if you want more enemies more quickly, you can do that. Or you can slow it down to help you concentrate a bit more and make things a lot easier. The only downside is that most of the game has you playing the same basic mob fights, which can get very repetitive, but that just means I have to punch my way through even more baddies to earn myself a platinum trophy, and this game earns itself a platinum ranking. Much like the first Garden Warfare and Battle for Neighborhood, Garden Warfare 2 has some trophies that are super easy and others that require a significant commitment. But unlike those games, this one makes them just plain fun to complete. Featuring some of the best gameplay, an open area that's fun to explore and do stuff in, a unique raid style mission that's fun and challenging, and lots more. It's easily the most fun I've had with any of these three games. And even after unlocking the plat, it's the one I'm still playing, which I can't really say goes for the other two games, either because I was burned out on it or because it doesn't feel like there's enough for me to continue. Easily my favorite of the Garden Warfare games and well deserving of a platinum tier ranking on this list. Everything about Psychonauts 2 is fantastic, from the gameplay and story to everything in between, and thankfully, that absolutely translates to the trophies. Completing the games and collecting everything was massively streamlined from the original, and it makes getting the Platinum a fun breeze that I would gladly do again. The only real trophy issue I had was the missable Duck Duck Goose trophy, simply because if you don't get it when you're first fighting the panic attack enemy as boss fights in the Psy King's level, you either have to play the game again until you get to that point to get it, I have no problem playing through this game again, and I sped my way through the opening bits of the game just to walk away with my Platinum. This was absolutely one of the best gaming experiences I had in 2021, and while I personally still prefer the first game overall, Psychonauts 2 is still a fantastic follow-up and rightfully fits alongside the other entries in the Platinum tier. A Halloween-infused little indie title that feels like a modern version of the PlayStation 1 original Medieval, Pumpkin Jack is a short but still fun-to-play experience that is a breeze to complete. With only two collectibles to find in the game, those being 20 Raven Skulls and one Gramophone per level, the rest of your time can just be spent completing each level and experiencing the occasionally hilarious story. Aside from maybe one or two minor control issues during a couple of the on-rails sections found in each level, the game is a fun little Halloween-worthy adventure. What's even better is that the trophy list is just as easy to complete, so this is certainly more trick than treat and worthy of a platinum tier ranking. The latest entry in the acclaimed series and a landmark title for the PlayStation 5, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is not only a fun and beautifully realized vision, but an easy to complete platinum with trophies that only benefit the gameplay thanks to how you unlock them. The story missions aside, several trophies just have you playing the game, like using weapons in specific ways or searching for the various collectibles that for the most part enhance the world around you. In general, the trophies only enhance the experience in my mind, and I would complete them again if given the opportunity, which is enough of a reason to honor this stellar game with a platinum tier ranking on this list. A simple platinum that if this list were talking about the structure of the game instead of the trophies themselves might actually be knocked down or rank, but it is not, so therefore it is a platinum ranked game. Tie the Tasmanian Tiger features certain collectibles that don't really help you in-game and are only there for the sake of collecting, or at the very least, by the time you can collect all of them, their reward is effectively useless. But none of them are really hard to find and pretty much all the other trophies just have you play the game, so it's good. Aside from that and some wonky camera controls, the game is a breeze to complete, easily doable within 10 hours. I'm glad that this game is as good as I remember it being, and I think at least in part my memories of this game are what helped me with collectibles and stuff but even then, it's a platinum tier ranked game and a hell of a nostalgia trip to close out this video with. And with that, we are finally done. However many games that was because I can't be bothered to count out for it now because I'm recording, ranked on whether or not I liked unlocking their platinum trophies. But that said, 
What games did you platinum this year? If you are that type of person to go out and do that. Let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and do all that other fun youtube -y stuff while you're down there. Follow me on Twitter, where I post the occasional poll for videos and silly stuff like this. And I will see all of you in the next video. Take care.